In depth tonight in the Fox Files, how weather data is being used to help put criminals behind bars. City grass cutters make a gruesome discovery. Investigators tell me they're using dental records. A man's body was found in a North St. Louis alley. More than 150 violent crimes are committed every hour in this country, according to the FBI. But an increasing number of these crimes are being solved with the help of a new breed of weather professionals called forensic meteorologists. Forensic meteorology is to use meteorology to find the truth in a court case where weather was a factor. And anything from lightning to hail to snow, even the temperature can be a critical factor when it comes to revealing the truth in a court of law. Take, for instance, the murder of Kathleen Peterson in North Carolina back in 2001. I would never have done anything to hurt her. Her husband, former newspaper columnist Michael Peterson, claimed he and his wife had been out by the pool drinking late that December night, and that his wife became tipsy, got up to go inside, and fell down a flight of stairs to her death. I am innocent of these charges, and we will prove it in court. The DA hired a forensic meteorologist to reconstruct the temperatures that December morning, and he determined that at the house in question, the temperatures were in the low 50s. Not exactly pool weather. Based in part on the testimony of the meteorologist, Peterson was convicted of murdering his wife. He was sentenced to life in prison. You got to look at the logistics of it. Here in Missouri, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department has been factoring weather into their investigations for years. Oftentimes, weather's important. In a recent case, they used weather reports to narrow down the time frame in which a crime was committed and close in on a person of interest. We know that on that day, we got a lot of rain. Uh, therefore, the victim would, or the suspect would have taken mud from the scene of the crime with him. Mud that might later be used to link that man to the crime scene. But what may be the most intriguing use of forensic meteorology is being explored at the University of Tennessee. I traveled to Knoxville to see firsthand the university's forensic anthropology research facility, better known as the Body Farm. We have somewhere around 130 bodies out here right now. Behind these gates, in a remote corner of the university campus, researchers are trying to uncover new ways to link criminals to crime scenes. To do that, Dr. Lee Jansen and her team of scientists do what some may find disturbing. We've created many different situations or scenarios in which bodies may be found. In the trunk of a car, under a concrete slab, or in a simple shallow grave, each scene is designed to mirror what investigators may come across in the real world. The purpose of this facility is to conduct um, research into the estimation of time since death. The theory being that if you can more accurately estimate the time of death... You can start looking at suspects and you can eliminate suspects. Weather is the guiding factor. Dr. Jantz says almost every element of weather can be of value in an investigation. We look at environment, um, bodies in the shade versus bodies in the sun. And the study isn't limited to fresh crime scenes either. It's been out here for at least two years, probably going on three years, and we're looking to see how it weathers. What does the weathering process do to the bones, and can we use that to estimate how long a person's been out here? Is it safe to say, though, that research that you all are doing here and the information gained from that is helping to clear people or put them in jail? Absolutely.